Hey, what is going on? It is Crypto Bobby. Hope you are having a good day wherever you're watching in from. And want to talk today about what is going on in the marketplace in general. A lot, a lot of big moves coming on numerous cryptos out there, whether it's been Ethereum up pretty big, especially in comparison to Bitcoin, basically establishing a brand new all time high. Ripple coming out of nowhere within the past 24 hours, getting back into the promised lands, establishing a new all time high before falling about 10, 12% since then. Cardano, EOS, uh, numerous, numerous cryptos out there uh, making some really nice moves. So if you've been heavy in the altcoins, especially in a, a select few number of those, if you've been pretty heavy altcoins, that has turned out to be a you know pretty good thing for you so far. Also want to talk a little bit about some of the debate, and you're going to start seeing it picking up more and more and more. And I, I, I said this was going to happen back when Bitcoin hit $10,000 that the mainstream press was going to just go nuts about this stuff because, quite frankly, they're probably getting a ton of clicks. They're probably getting a ton of views. And that's what press cares about. That's what you know, most people care about when it comes to media is press views. So talking a ton about Bitcoin. And there's a lot of people that they're bringing on to, whether it's Bloomberg, whether it's CNBC, wherever it is, you know, people that have great positive feelings about Bitcoin that think Bitcoin's going to go up to $100,000 and a million bucks. And there's also people that think that you know, Bitcoin is a total fraud and anybody who puts a dollar in it should be thrown in jail for the rest of their life and fed to the tigers. So I want to talk a little bit about that, specifically one um, an economist that came out and we'll talk a little bit about it. We'll show the Bloomberg video and we'll get into that. But first, one of the big things today will pop open. So on on chain FX right now, the past 24 hours or so, what's been going down, some really nice movements from a variety of crypto out there. But the big one today, Ripple, uh, I personally don't have any money in Ripple. I know a lot of you guys do. So congrats on a real nice move, especially if you bought in in that 20 cent range, which I know is kind of chilling out for quite some time. So for anybody out there that has made 63% in terms of Bitcoin, 55% on the US dollar in the past day or so, good on you. That's one heck of a move. Uh, pretty awesome there. And a variety of other ones out there, Tron, library credits, which are a little bit smaller. EOS having another nice move up 24%. And I think one of the, you know, it's one of the big things in the past day or so, but uh, uh, Ethereum actually just crushing it. And so we can pull this up. We'll pull it up on the entire chart here. But Ethereum in the past day is up from, it's fallen down quite a bit from its all-time high a few, you know, a few hours ago. It was pushing up to $800. Right now it's just below $700. But uh, ETH was in that 620, 630 range or so when we had talked about it last and now is up above. At one point it was up to 780, pushed back pretty hard. But now maybe steadying a little bit in the $700 range. So we'll have to see how that plays out. But typically when Ethereum is able to make some significant movements, a lot of the altcoins tend to follow, which is, I think, a really positive thing in, in general. So I'm excited to see how these altcoins end up, how some of these altcoins, which a lot of, a lot of them have done pretty well lately, uh, not only just in comparison to Bitcoin, but just generally speaking against the dollar and things of that nature, against your local currency, whatever that might be. The one thing I think is interesting, especially when you're looking at ICOs, though, uh, is a lot of people yet last night on Crypto Happy Hour, they were asking me, uh, you know, how you how you feeling about the Bloom ICO? How are you feeling about which I, which I did participate in? Um, but I put some my own money into Bloom and not, not many other ICOs out there right now. I'm evaluating a few other ones, but that's one thing you actually want to, to take into account with any ICO is if you're putting money into that, what's the opportunity cost and how might that hold up? Because I think, and if I, I, I don't remember off the top of my head exactly, I could probably go back and check. But when I put money into the Bloom ICO, the price of Ethereum was at about like 450 maybe or so, less than $500. So if the Bloom token doesn't end up keeping pace with the price of Ethereum, if it doesn't at least hold its, its if it doesn't at least hold its weight in comparison to the initial trading ratio between Ethereum and Bloom token, you're basically losing money when you would have had that if you just kept that in Ethereum. So I'm hoping at least in the case of Bloom and for any other ICOs that you might have put money into, I'm hoping that the the movement up of Ethereum is something that over time, the Bloom token, which isn't released yet, the ICO is not over, it ends January 1st, I think, but, and for any other ICO as well, is in that gap between when you invest and when the token becomes publicly accessible, does that token actually you know, keep weight with the price of Ethereum if the, you know, if the price of Ethereum goes up? 
You know, in some cases that can almost be a shelter because people think that you know, if you put your money in an ICO and the market goes down, it almost shields you a little bit between one that's publicly accessible if the you know, if the the price of the token ends up staying at the same from a U.S. dollar perspective. So something to keep in mind there. But just something when a couple of different people are asking me about my thoughts on the you know, on investing in the ICO, the big thing that I'm thinking of right now is heck, the price of Ethereum has gone up like two hundred, two hundred fifty dollars since I put my money into it. I would have actually potentially I might be who knows how the market's going to react once it once that token hits the market but will it even keep pace with the price of ethereum maybe maybe not we'll have to you'll know, have to see how that pans out and going into you know one thing that I think is interesting and I talked about this a little bit on Twitter yesterday but I so this is uh Joseph Stiglitz who was on Bloomberg and here is what he has to say about Bitcoin I'll, I'll play part of it but yeah I'll, I'll play part of it I have not seen anybody provide an argument for why Bitcoins are socially useful. I mean, what, what are Bitcoins about? They're a medium of exchange. Yes. If you look at traditional textbook economics, what is a good medium of exchange? Well, we have the dollar, we have the euro. But we were doubtful about gold. We, 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 we were well, doubtful about gold. Gold was not a very good medium of exchange. So, so the question is, is it more stable than the dollar? No, it's been fluctuating over all over the place. It, that kind of volatility is not what you want from a medium of exchange. Is it open and transparent? No, that's precisely the point. It is because it's not open and transparent that there is a demand. I think the demand is for people who want to engage in illegitimate uh, activities. And in my mind, as soon as uh, it becomes uh, it's clear that there are significant amounts of these kinds of illegitimate, illegal activities going on. The government will shut it down. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Joey. Um, appreciate the wonderful comments there. You know, there is a lot of things that you can negatively say about Bitcoin. Let's be real. There's a lot of negative things you can say about cryptocurrency. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. It's not all fantastic. Not everything is, you know, not everything works out great. But... When you talk about Bitcoin not being socially useful because it's not open and transparent, that's like the dumbest argument ever. That's like literally 101. You know, I guess it's not open and transparent. I mean, I guess it's not transparent. I guess I can't type in any transaction or any address and see exactly what happened. I can't see the price. You know, I can't see anything that goes on on the blockchain. It's not a completely transparent digital ledger that has every transaction that's ever happened in history on Bitcoin. Yes, there is not names on, yes, there are no names associated with the block explorer. Yes, there are not names there. Yeah, your social security number isn't probably linked to your Bitcoin address, but at the same point in time, the government can really find out, you know, who you are and what you're doing if they really want to. Somebody at Consensus, I think it was Chris Bernisky who wrote digital assets or excuse me, crypto assets, a joke that you're better off buying a kilo of blow with the US dollar than you are with Bitcoin because Bitcoin is so much basically so much more transparent and it's a lot easier to link you back, which has also led to the rise of Monero and Zcash and all these other cryptocurrencies out there that have privacy features because Bitcoin is not that private. And if you're trying to, you know, start the next Silk Road, you're not gonna use Bitcoin for it. So good old Joey's argument there is a little bit silly, and then the whole, you know, open uh, Bitcoin source code. I, you know, I, I, I don't know about the whole, you know, the whole thing with Bitcoin. Just who knows? It's, uh, <laughs> when, when somebody says Bitcoin isn't open, it's literally open source software. You can type in Bitcoin GitHub and you can go to that, not Bitcoin GitHub. When, you know, it's not, uh, when it's not open source, when it's not open and transparent, I guess you literally can't go to GitHub and see the exact code that's written and you can't go to the block explorer and see exactly what is happening on a, basically on a per 10 minute basis on a, on a multiple block basis. So those arguments are, I just like drive me nuts personally, because there are a lot of arguments that you can make. You can say the transaction fees are high. You can say that it's not instant as was previously mentioned you can say that um there are just numerous things you can say that are 
negative about Bitcoin. You could say that nobody's using it as a medium of exchange. Nobody is using it as a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash. People are simply buying it, holding it. You could say all those things, but when you say it's not open and transparent, that just goes to show that you have extremely limited knowledge about Bitcoin, about about specifically Bitcoin, but about numerous other crypto assets as well. Um, so I think that you know that type of thing, when you hear that, you're going to start hearing it more and more often. Everybody's coming out. I see on CNN right now that the wolf of Wall Street has come out and said, Bitcoin is a fraud. Cryptocurrencies are a fraud. Pretty rich coming from the guy that literally made like $100 million defrauding people selling penny stocks. So you know, we'll, we'll not get into that. But there's there are just so many people out there that are going to come out and say, you know, Bitcoin is you know full of crap. Crypto is full of crap. Uh, you shouldn't put your money into it. And there are a variety of reasons why you should and why you shouldn't put your money into it. But saying it's not open and transparent is idiotic at best. So especially from somebody who's the, an economics professor at um, you know an Ivy League university, you'd think there might be a little bit more research done on that. But who am I to judge, right? So who knows? The one other thing that I'll say too going into the conversation today is that I'm evaluating just my general portfolio. I'm evaluating a little bit as far as this was about a week ago, December 5th, when I updated this. So my overall portfolio and the weight I have in my portfolio. So if you're listening on the podcast back about eight days ago, I really haven't made too many changes, but about 58% of the portfolio is in Bitcoin. So a vast majority in Bitcoin, about 13.5% in Ethereum, 10% uh, in VeChain, 5% uh, in Cardano, about 3.5% in Ethereum Classic, 5% in Zcash and about 4.5% in OMG. I'm now looking at potentially moving a little bit more of my Bitcoin into the altcoins for the time being, because I think with the amount of new money in the space, and this is just something that's a little bit of a thesis on my end, but I think with the amount of new money that's coming to the space, I know there's a ton of new money coming to the space, but people are continually looking at Bitcoin and they're saying, I am never going to be able to get the gains that everybody was in here early got with Bitcoin. I'm never going to be able to get those gains. I can't even afford to hold Bitcoin, whatever, whatever. I'm looking at the cheap coin. I'm looking at the, the less expensive one. I'm looking at the next Bitcoin, the next Ethereum, whatever it is. And even if that's a stupid investment thesis, and even if that you know Bitcoin long-term is going to be the best thing to go, I think short-term, there's a lot of altcoins that might continue to pump. So I'm looking at potentially shaving off some of my overall weight in Bitcoin, maybe down from like 58, 60%, maybe down to like 40%, uh, and specifically putting some more money in Cardano, uh, specifically putting a little bit, maybe more money in Zcash, and uh, trying to evaluate some other, some other plays that might make sense. But that's kind of what I'm thinking right now is that I'm thinking about reducing a little bit of weight. Overall, my long-term goal, really, quite frankly, when it comes down to the portfolio is to just build... Bitcoin and Bitcoin and Bitcoin and stack it because one day I do think it's going to be worth 25,000, 100,000. And when that happens, when you have a hoard of Bitcoin, that is, that could be your retirement fund. That could be whatever, you know, using to pay off your house, whatever it might be. So for the time being though, I'm looking at potentially reducing a little bit of exposure to Bitcoin because I think a lot of people are going to take their money and they're looking at, Hey, I am making, I'm trying to find the next thing. I'm trying to find the next big thing. And when the herd does that, it typically props the price up and can lead to some pretty substantial gains. And you've seen that obviously with Litecoin so far, although Litecoin's had a little bit of a pullback, but you've seen that with Litecoin. You're seeing that right now a little bit with Ethereum. Um, you're seeing that with numerous with Ripple as well. Everybody's always asking, hey, what's Ripple? What about Litecoin? What about Ethereum? All these other cryptos out there uh, so that are, that are pumping right now as Bitcoin is kind of steadying a little bit. So if Bitcoin can hold steam, if not, maybe go down and have some of that money flow into the altcoins. That could be something that could be really interesting as you continue to watch. So I'm excited to watch and see how I can develop my portfolio. If you have any specific theses that you're looking at right now in terms of just an overall how you're constructing your portfolio in general or what you're looking to do, I'd love to hear it. I'd love your thought process on that. And if there's anything specifically that you think is a really good fit or something that I should be evaluating, throw that in the comments as well. And I'd love to hear it. So outside of that, guys, I really do appreciate the time. If you are new to the channel by any chance, my name is Crypto Bobby. I do daily videos on the subject of cryptocurrency. And then I also do YouTube live crypto happy hours. So I will try to, I'm going to try to do one this evening, probably going to be towards the later end of the spectrum. I'm going to try to, I'm going to happy hour in New York tonight, a real happy hour. Um, so I'm going to happy hour, real happy hour tonight in New York, but I'm going to try to 
uh, try to get back in time for like a 10 p.m. crypto happy hour. So I'll try and schedule that in YouTube. But if you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe on the little notify bell next to that. So when I do go live, you get a notification, you can join for that. Really do appreciate all the comments that you have. Look forward to interacting with you guys and good luck in the markets today. Hope you have a good one. Peace.